Hi everybody, this is Rat Hall Cat back at you again with another cool video. Today in New Jersey, well, <laughs> I was gonna say it's a nice sunny day. No, it's not. It's cloudy today. It's a nice spring day, but it's cloudy, it's drizzly. I'm getting a little bit wet here today, but I had to record this video, had to record it. Hopefully, it's a better day where you are, but today, cloudy, 68 degrees, and a little bit drizzly, a little bit rainy, but nonetheless, we are here today because I had to be excited, had to be excited to give you this video. Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk is back in the driveway. Why? Because, well, why not? We haven't seen the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk in the driveway in a while. I've been doing so many videos in the driveway with the Dodge Durango Hellcat. So we had to bring him back. We had to bring him back because you know this video is going to be all about, well, you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title. This is another Rowl Hellcat walk around. Yes, Rowl Hellcat walk around. And this video is all about the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. Now, it's not going to be my Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. My Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk is a 2018. This Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk is 2021 and one of the last ones built. Possibly the last one built. This is one of the December builds of the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. December 2021 is the final, 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 final month of production of the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. And now the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk is no more. There's no more Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. That was the last one built. That was the final month of the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk being built. The same assembly line as the Dodge Durango Hellcat. There are no more Dodge Durango Hellcats being built right now. Both of them were at the same Jefferson plant, and December 31st was the final day that either of them were built. Final day for the Dodge Durango Hellcat being built, final day for the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk being built. So this walk around is special because this video is gonna contain one of the December builds, possibly one of the last Jeep Grand Cherokees being built in the world, in the world. And where is this? Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk at? Yes, we are back at Sansone, 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 Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Avenel, New Jersey. We were there, just there maybe last week, two weeks ago, actually. It was two weeks ago that I recorded and maybe a week ago that you saw the Dodge Challenger Hellcat. You remember the last two built for 2021, the two 2021 Dodge Challenger Hellcats that we just previewed, did a nice walk around at Sandstone. Well, right after that, within a couple of weeks of me recording the Dodge Challenger Hellcats, this arrived, and that is the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk in bright white. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. You saw the thumbnail, those are the pictures, and now we're gonna do the walk around. So I wanna shout out again to Sandstone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Avenel, New Jersey. Shout out to my team at Sansone. Definitely got to shout all you guys out. Shout out to Eli, who's the general manager. And shout out to all the great salespeople there, including Trey, Angie, Patrick, and Arion. Yes, shout out to you guys. We will do more with you guys right after this video. In fact, at the end of this video, we'll have a little bonus footage for you and you get to meet Trey, Angie, Patrick, Arion, and Eli. And then we'll go over all that information and final thoughts at the end of the video. So without further ado, enough of me talking. I know you came to not hear me talk. You came here today to watch the walk around, the walk around of the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, one of the last ones built in the world. We're gonna get right to the video right now, and I'll be back with you again with final thoughts. Enjoy the video. Okay, boys and girls, we are here for another Rao Hellcat walk around. This time we're back at Sansone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Avenel, New Jersey. Shout out to Eli Jimenez, who allowed me to come here again today to feature this awesome 2021 Trackhawk. Yes, the 2021 Trackhawk. This is the last one built. The last one that I've ever seen. In fact, I haven't seen a 2021 Trackhawk. I may have seen maybe two of them, maybe built in the summertime. 
but because of the success of the Durango Hellcat, everyone was ordering the Durango Hellcat. No one was ordering the Trackhawks. I don't know how many they've built in 2021. If you remember the statistics, I think we went over this once before, they made 7,500 Trackhawks in 2018, but they made less than a thousand Trackhawks in both 2019 and 2020. And I can almost guarantee you they did the same in 2021. We don't have the final numbers yet. I'm going to share that with you in a moment. But it's going to be less than a 1,000. I would assume it's going to be in the hundreds of Trackhawks built in 2021. So this is a 2021 Trackhawk. It's in bright white. It's not the ivory tricolor paint. It's the bright white, non-metallic. You have the Trackhawk badge here. You have your Sansone badge already on the back. Again, we're at Sansone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Avenel, New Jersey. You got the quad tips on both sides. And this time, boys and girls, the quad tips are actually straight. <laughs> they're not wonky. They're not uh, tilted. Or Let's see. Are they even on both sides? No, they're not even on both sides. They can never get this right from the factory, but this is easy to fix since they're on that ball joint that you can easily adjust those tips. So new owner can do that. I'll have fun with that. So again, quick walk around of the 2021 Trackhawk. What we'll be doing next is we'll be going over all the options, the MSRP, and how much this is going to be if you want to buy this. They, the gates, this is gated and locked before and they took down the gates you can see there was a gate here this little gate right here was surrounding the vehicle it says on the top here do not touch because they know me i'm going to be able to touch this thing so again we're going to give you a quick preview this is the the walk around on the outside we're gonna do a walk around on the inside i'm gonna pop the hood do the piece that resist on show you the, the hellcat powered or the hellcat engine that's powering the Trackhawk and of course go over some comparisons between this Trackhawk and my Trackhawk you can see my Trackhawk is right outside there's my Trackhawk there it's only fitting bring your Trackhawk to view another Trackhawk easy comparison so without further ado let's dive in the first thing I want to take a look at is when this thing was built and as you know they stopped building these in December. This is the December build. Here it is, boys and girls. Yes, built in December. And <laughs> we're in April and it just arrived this week. Just arrived this week. So I don't know how it was built in December and it just arrived now. So when was this built? What was the date on this? It was built on December 22nd, around two o'clock in the afternoon. So this is when this is built. December 22nd was when this was built, 2021. And that's the final month of when both the Trackhawk and the Durango Hellcats were built. So now that you've seen that, let's dive right in. Let's see if we can find the window sticker. I don't see it. It's not on the, on the window here. So let me go find the window sticker. I'll be right back. And then we'll dive into the inside. Okay, we're doing a little bit of cheating because we've already opened the tailgate. And you know how I like to demo that. But... That's where the window sticker wound up being. So this is a 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. The base price, they went up. Before, base prices on a Trackhawk was under 90,000, but now in 2021, the least expensive Trackhawk with nothing in it is 90,070, and that's not including destination. So it's got all the standard features, as you can see here. It is not a customer order, it's a dealer order. You have your standard 200 mile power dash, six way power seat. Also has the heated and cooled seats in the front. Also has a leather wrap dash. Has all those cool things. It comes standard with the black satin rims, unlike my track walk where the black satin rims were optional, but it's standard. I believe they became standard in 2020 is when they became standard. And then the optional rim was the titanium rim and then in 21 there is no optional rim in 21 this is the only room that you can get in 2021 so with all that being said let's take a look at the optional equipment there's only two options on this 
red seat belt, <laughs> red seat belt and the black roof. So I'll show you the black painted roof in a moment, but that's $2,100. You don't have the panoramic sunroof. You don't have the Harman Kardon. You don't have the leather interior, but most people don't care about the leather interior. It doesn't have the tow package. I think that's about it. I think it was three season tires, tow package, Harman Kardon, power sunroof, and leather interior. That would take you over $100,000, but this is only $93,860, $93,860 with destination. So now that we've seen the window sticker, I'm going to close the back because we're going to save this for a little bit later. I'm going to save this for later. And now, boys and girls, we're going to dive in. Dive into the interior of this beautiful Trackhawk. Okay, how to get the key. So we get the Trackhawk key. We have the key here. That looks nice and brand new. Mine all looks like scraped up. <laughs> but that's okay. So we have our red key. You only get two red keys with the Trackhawk. There is no such thing as a black key. And there's no such thing as a reduced horsepower setting as well. So... With all that being said, let's go and dive in here. So on the door panel, we're gonna start off on the door panel before we even dive in and get in. On the door panel, it has the standard carbon fiber, which I love. It also has a standard leather wrapped armrest. It does not have the leather wrap on, the, because it doesn't have the leather wrap package, it does not have the leather wrap on the top of the door, nor on the bottom. <laughs> That's okay, it's still good, still awesome, still looks great in black. This is the standard speaker, it doesn't have Harman Kardon, but this is what it would look like if it didn't have Harman Kardon. It has this speaker, which is a standard Alpine system. Also has the nice Trackhawk mats. I really, really like how these mats are really unique in that they're this like um, Berber uh, texture. It's not like a, actually, it's not your like standard mat. It's like this nice, more premium finish. And it's got the metal Trackhawk badge right on the mat itself. Really cool, really nice. This also has the suede package. While suede is the standard interior in both the Trackhawk and the Dragon Hawk, it's a little bit different on the Trackhawk. There's more leather than suede on this particular seat as opposed to the Durango Hellcat or the Durango SRT. This has the suede, okay? Same suede Alcantara that I have in my seat has a suede on the back here, but the suede for the Durango Hellcat goes all the way back here, whereas with the Jeeps, specifically the Trackhawk and the SRT, it actually has a leather up top here and leather on the sides. It's Napa leather. Leather on the sides, leather on the bolsters, and it actually comes in a little bit more so. Leather on this side as well. And it's got the embroidered Trackhawk. Now, I wish I had embroidered Trackhawk on mine, but when you get Laguna, it's embossed. So that's the only difference. And of course, one of the options, like I said before, it does have the red seatbelt. So these are the red seatbelts right here. Pretty cool, pretty nice. You gotta get rid of the red seat belts. If you got black interior, you gotta get red seat belts. If you got a red interior, you should also get red seat belts. Why not? All right, now that we've looked at the outside, let's dive in and sit in this thing. We've been looking forward to doing this for the past two weeks. It's been two weeks since I was here before, and we did the preview of both the Smoke Show and the Black Challenger Hellcats that are still there. But that's okay. We're here to do the track hawk. And on the steering wheel, again, it's got the Jeep logo right in the center where the horn is. And it's got your Trackhawk right on the steering wheel, just like on mine. What's the mileage on this thing? Let's take a look. You start it up here. It's got 19 miles on it. So 19 miles, supercharged. That's how it lights up. Let's close the door. All right, let's rock and roll. Now, let's see. Let's put this in the run position. We're not going to start it just yet. We may start it. We're not going to start it right now, but we're going to... Just take a look on the interior real quick. All right, so we got your media here. We make sure we don't have that on. It's got Sirius XM here. So you have that, it's not set up. So it usually defaults to this when it's not set up. Climate is off. And notice when we turn the climate on, it doesn't have the carry forward of what we saw in the Durango SRT and the Durango Hellcat where it's got the helmets. Now, of course, this is Uconnect 4. Even though the Durango Hellcat and the Durang all the Durangos for that matter got Uconnect 5, the Jeep Grand Cherokee WK2s did not get the upgrade to Uconnect 5. They still have Uconnect 4. So we continue on. This is nothing different than 
the infotainment system that you would have in my Trackhawk or in any of the Trackhawks from 2018 to 2021. The only difference, the only difference is that you have the 2019 bezel that was, like I said, introduced in 2019. In 2018, the bezel was more like this texture here. So this is the texture. In fact, here's the bezel right here. So this is the bezel in 2018 around that door handle. This is the bezel in 2018 around the air vent. And this same bezel was the bezel that surrounded the infotainment system. And in fact, I'll do a quick cut over to my track walk real quick, just to show you what that looks like. So we'll do that right now. Okay, so here's the quick cut over into my 2018 Trackhawk. So you can see how the bezel, it's all silver and this gloss around it. It's not the piano black. It matches that bezel, it matches that bezel. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much what the bezel looks like on my 2018 Trackhawk. And then of course it matches, this matches the material perfectly. So it's the same throughout yeah so it's the same thing throughout so again that's the cut over to mine and then we'll cut back over to the 2021 track walk and we're back so as you can see this is where the bezel for both the handle and the vent it's like that on the 2018 track walk and on all the wk2 models but in 2019 they went to this gloss black didn't match the bezels which that's the biggest zonk i can give it right now if you're going to change this bezel here why don't you change the bezels here that should have been all black as well but they didn't do it in 2019 and they they didn't attempt to do it in 2020 or 2021 so that's it that's the way it is and there's not much you can do about it but this carries over from 2018 this carries over from 2018 and this is my favorite of all the features of both the Durango Hellcat, Durango SRT, Trackhawk, and Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT, in that you have your drive modes right on the center console. I love that. So it defaults to auto. You can change the sport. In fact, if I change the sport here, it's supposed to change up here. It doesn't do that. So let's do that now. Let's do that now. Drive modes. All right. So right now we're in sport. You got track, you got sport, you got auto, you got snow, you got tow, and you got custom. I'll show you custom in a minute. Oh, wow. Someone went all out with custom mode and put everything in track. Pretty cool. That was a smart dude, whoever did that. You get your drive modes here. We're going to go over that in a moment, but let's first go over what we affectionately know as this is your dial here. So you can do all your controls from the dial or you can do it from the touch screen. So this is the, the track mode setting. You have your track set up, which makes no sense whatsoever because you can't change anything. You can't change it to street. You can't change it to sport. You can't change it to anything. I don't know why this even exists. It makes no sense. So there's a track setup mode and you don't need it. So. If you want everything in track, it's track. The only thing I have to say about track mode in the Jeep Grand Cherokee track walk is that the suspension is very harsh in track mode. I can really only take the sport suspension and that's what my default is, but I think my default may even be street, but the track mode setting suspension is terrible, but the track transmission and the track steering is the way to go. So I'll do that in a second. So next go, we'll go to sport. Sport's the same thing. It's got your sports setup. And again, you can't change the street, you can't change the track on any of the settings. It makes no sense. I don't know why, it just doesn't make any sense. So that's that. Then if we wanna to go to the next one, auto. Auto, you can make some changes. So with auto, I think you can change the suspension and the steering. So I would typically keep it on street across the board, but that's the only thing you can change in auto. I believe you can't do sport with the transmission, you can't do sport with the stability, you can't do sport with the all wheel drive. The only thing you can do in auto is change your suspension and steering. But at least you have that. You don't have that in sport or track, but you have it in auto. Snow is the same thing. The snow setup, I think the only thing you can change is the, oh, uh, you can't even, you can't change the suspension. So everything's locked down in snow as well. Everything's locked down. You can't change anything. So snow is set to snow. 
Toe is set to, I would assume, toe. And this has a toe mode, but it doesn't have the toe package. So that's another interesting fun fact. I don't know why you would use this, but here it is. And I believe that's the same thing with the Durango SRT and Hellcat. It has a toe mode for that, even if you don't have the toe package. Makes no sense, but that's okay. This is the one we want to talk about. This is the custom mode. Custom mode is the way to go. Here's my custom setup. Let's do that now. So transmission, I like the sport transmission. Stability, I like the sport. Oil drive, I like street. Suspension, I like street. And steering, I like track. This is my custom mode. I love this mode. I really do. The only thing I usually change when I'm on the road, depending on how I, I drive on the highway, is that the track transmission is good for if you don't want to use eighth gear. If you want to have that always on seventh gear, it only goes up to seventh and no other gear, then that is where I would change the transmission. This is the transmission setting I use for the Durango Hellcat. I usually use the track all the time because I like it to be in seventh. It just does not have any pick up whatsoever with the eighth gear unless i'm going like say over 80 miles an hour which i seldom do if never so whenever you're under 80 miles an hour you really want to be in seventh gear and the only way you can make it be in seventh all the time is track transmission however in the jeep grand cherokee i, I don't know if it must be calibrated differently in that it does kick up to seventh a lot easier in the Jeep than it does on the Durango. When I do that comparison between the two, I will talk about that more. But for today's video, I'm not going to talk about that anymore because we're going to, we're running out of time here. We wanted to do a quick walk around. We're just talking way too much about this. So let's move on. This is my current custom mode setup. The other thing that you control are your heated and cooled seats, your ventilated steering wheel, the backup camera. So there's your backup camera there. We have the passenger seat also can be heated and ventilated, even with the suede. And then you have other settings here. These are your main settings as far as display, units, voice, clock, camera, all that stuff. It's pretty much standard fare. We have a separate video for that. If you ever want to watch that, please feel free. I've already put that out. And then, of course, your apps. The apps are the same. These are all Uconnect 4 apps. So you have three pages of that. And then, of course, you can also take these settings to... And move them around so if i wanted to make say if i wanted to move c over to here i can move that over and see how the nav and the con seating controls switch i could also take the backup camera and move that down if i wanted to and now i put the backup camera where i believe was the phone i'm going to change that back but that's just to give you an idea it's still the same connectivity that you have here with the Uconnect 4, it's not a bad system, it's just that Uconnect 5 is way better. This is not wireless Android or wireless Apple CarPlay, this is a wired system, and the only way you can use the Apple CarPlay is you have to use your jacks that are right under here. So I, what I did was I opened this up. Where your connectivity is, you have USB, I think it's just standard USB, you do not have USB-C like you do in the Durango. Then you have all your physical buttons here, you have your AC, you have your recirculating air, you have mute, screen, hazards, your temperature controls for driver, passenger controls for scent for uh, the passenger. You have your park sense. You can use your either parking assist on or off, stability control, eco mode. Yeah, so you have all of the physical buttons that you normally would have in the Jeep Grand Cherokee dating back to, I don't know, uh, 2014 maybe when the SRT came out, 2013 perhaps, but that's hasn't changed in all those years and now with the wl platform that's all changed if i didn't go over this before you have the carbon fiber on the door panel here you have the carbon fiber on the dash and every grand cherokee trackhawk and srt has a leather wrap dash there's no alligator skin on the dashboard even when you have no options this is very much a no options vehicle it doesn't have the sunroof obviously it doesn't have the suede headliner, but the suede headliner would have came with the panoramic roof, but this doesn't have the suede headliner because it doesn't have the roof. All right, so I think that is all I wanted to see here. Again, it's got 19 miles on it. It's got 200 miles per hour on the dashboard. Pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool. It's got a full tank of gas. Let's go out and get you some. Let's come get some or get you some of that.
Jeep Grand Cherokee track. All right, so this is enough about the front. One other thing I forgot to mention on the steering wheel. So on the steering wheel, it has your paddle shifters are standard, even with no options. But like I said, there's only three or four options that it's missing. It does have adaptive cruise control. That's pretty cool. Adaptive cruise control is standard on the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the Trackhawk and SRT. Really cool, really cool. You don't have to spend and worry about the tech package. The tech package in the Durango SRT and Hellcat is a $2,500 option. Many people did not get it because it was so expensive. But because it's so expensive, some people opt out. And when you opt out, you really don't get the features like Adaptive Cruise. Adaptive Cruise is really a cool feature to have. Say if you're set to 79 miles per hour. Right under the place where you would get a ticket in a 65 zone you set it to 79 but someone cuts in front of you going either 70 or 75 or 65 what will happen is the vehicle automatically slow down to the vehicle that's in front of it and this way you don't have to kick yourself out of cruise control and have to re-establish cruise control what will happen is it'll go back to the set speed once that vehicle gets out of the way in front of you i just wanted to show you the rest of the steering wheel and the packages so with all that being said Let's go into the back seat. Enough about the front seat. Let's go down in the back seat and talk about the leg room and the seat setup and all that good stuff. So let's leave the front seat. I'll meet you in the back seat. Okay, so we're now about to enter the back seat. Before we do, let's just go over some of the things that it's a part of the back seat, second row. So again, door panel's got that nice carbon fiber trim. Awesome, awesome. It doesn't have the leather wrapped on the door at all. It has that like alligator skin, which is okay. But it does have the leather wrapped armrest. You got your speaker here for your Alpine stereo system. It's really cool, really nice. And again, you have the black suede interior. It's not reclined. So let's recline these seats a little bit. All right, so I just reclined the seat so I can sit back here and be comfortable. So you have your suede. It's suede in the middle here, but then in the center, it's leather, which is really cool. So it's center is all leather, this middle part's all suede with leather, pretty much. This is more leather in the second row than the Durango for whatever reason. It's just different. I'm not gonna zonk it because just, we'll just say it's different, all right? It's different and then you have your center armrest, something you would not get in a regular Hellcat. So a Hellcat Challenger, Hellcat Charger does not have this, but it has it in the Trackhawk, has it in the Durango, only with the lightweight package. So you have your cup holders here, red seat belts. Again, you have your red seat belts, the monarch red seat belts on both sides and a monarch red seat belt for the center person that's gonna be able to sit back here. There's a lot more room back here than you would think. I'm comfortable, I'm sitting behind myself and I have plenty of leg room. You have your climate here. It's not climate control, but it's climate directional where you can turn the vents on and off and you can adjust the direction of the vents. It has USBs regular usbs as far as connectivity it also has charging plug here so you put, put that down it's got charging plug and it's got heated seats it doesn't have cooled seats but has heated seats not bad it does not have the dvds it has that's another option you could have gotten in this you could have gotten the option of dvds you don't have the roof that i really love because you have all this sunlight that's not going to get in but that's okay this is what you're you're getting this is the last track hawk built and when it's the last one, there's not much you can do about it. You can't say, I don't want this. Let me order it with the roof. You can't order it with the roof. They're not taking orders anymore. They're not building them anymore. So that's it. So this is the rear seat. Next step, let's go to the back. I'll show you the back cargo area. And then we're going to actually show you how easy it is to fold these seats down. Okay, we're now in the back of the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. All you have to do to open it is you flip this handle here. And it opens, beeps a little bit before it stops, and then it raises up. It raises up standard speed. Everyone says it could be faster, but I think it's fine. Lots of cargo area back here. Even though it does not have the Harman Kardon, you still have a subwoofer with the Alpine system that comes with this. So you have your subwoofer right here. I'd say there's a lot of good room back here. So it's 36.3 cubic feet with the second row up and 68.3 with the second row down, but that is pretty cool. It's a lot of cargo space, 36 cubic feet. The Durango has only 17 cubic feet with the third row up, but it does have 40 cubic feet with this third row down. So that's your difference right there. So this is 36 cubic feet. And I believe the Durango Hellcat or the Durango SRT or any of the Durangos has a little over 40 cubic feet. So 
let's keep going. What else does it have besides the window sticker? You have your front license plate, which I hope they don't use. You have your pedals here, which they need to put on. The dealer needs to do that, and I would never want to do it because it's so hard to do. Under here, all you have is cargo space. Now, this is the space that would have had the spare tire. Now, if you went with the tow package, you would get the spare tire automatically. And if you didn't get the tow package, you could also purchase the spare tire. I believe it's like a $400 option. You could have gotten that, but because this doesn't have either one of those options, all you have under here is a lot of good, valuable cargo space. Pretty cool, pretty nice. You can always opt to put in your own spare tire if you want. So I would suggest you go out and get a spare tire and this is where you would put it. But even if you didn't, at least you have the cargo space. So 36 cubic feet. And now we're gonna put down the second row. Let's see this. Just flip this down like this. And believe it or not, it does fold relatively flat. So that's with the second row down on the driver's side. All right. There you go. Okay, so now with that second row down, we now have 68 cubic feet of cargo area. The Durango, you have close to 85 cubic feet. So there's the differences there. So if you want to go Durango, you're going to have a lot more cargo area. That's a big difference between the Durango and the Jeep Grand Cherokee. So with all that being said, let's put the back seats back up for the next customer that wants it. All right, that seat's now up. <laughs> Brings the other side. We got the other side. Okay, so second row is back in place, nicey nice. It's actually in better position because I actually put it in its reclined position. So next, we lower the back tailgate. Lower the back tailgate. And now, as that goes down, we are now going back to the front. And you know what's next. You know what's next. <laughs> you know what's next. It's the piece de resistance. Trackhawk engine, the Trackhawk engine, otherwise known as the Hellcat engine. So without further ado, let's do that next. Okay, let's pop the hood. Let's pop the hood, boys and girls, the piece de resistance. The Hellcat engine, the Hellcat engine on the Trackhawk, I know. As we saw so many Durango Hellcats, I think this is the, the first time doing a 2021 Trackhawk and it's no different. It's no different, even though it's the last Trackhawk being built ever. It's got the Hellcat engine, the Hellcat engine. Let's go through the numbers, boys and girls. You know what I'm gonna say, but let's just go over it just for the hell of it. 6.2 liter, supercharged, Hemi. Hemi, Hemi, Hemi V8, 707 horsepower, 645 glorious American pound feet of torque awesome 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 i know it looks just like the engine you would see in the durango hellcat the same engine you would see in the challenger hellcat the charger hellcat but it is unique in that it looks more like the durango hellcat in fact let's reverse it the durango hellcat was built off of this setup because you have your pcm here in front of the fuse box and then you have your supercharger coolant right there. But look at all the space that you have in front of it. It's not something you would see normally in a Challenger or a Charger, but you have it in the Trackhawk and the Durango Hellcat. The other thing I'll make notice of too, is that you have this baffle here. In fact, I'm gonna do them a favor. I'm gonna take this off because this is something that PDI always misses. And take that, put it over here for the side because we're gonna take that off and give it to them because it really shouldn't be anywhere near the engine area. We don't want that getting around there and messing things up. So this is a baffle that actually tones down the supercharger one because this is so open that the supercharger one is so much louder with a Trackhawk or Durango Hellcat that they had to put this baffle. Also, based on the way that the interior is configured with the engine bay, that was also something that they didn't want people to complain that the wine was too loud, but we've cured that We've cured that for myself. We took off the standard intake and the baffle and we put a leg maker in there. And you know what I'm gonna say next? If you're gonna get a Trackhawk or Durango Hellcat, you gotta go with cold air intake and then you have to do billet 
engine bling. We're gonna do it again. So you wanna take this off and you're either gonna put a leg maker, LMI, cold air intake, or you can use a JLT, or you can use B Woody. This has to go along with this baffle. You have your new air sensor. That is something new that actually, I guess, hindered leg maker from making a 2019. This is this actually was added in 2019. And this was something that prevented or hindered leg maker because they made so few 2019s, 2020s. They just didn't make a leg maker until the Durango Hellcat comes out. And before, because they figured out how to reposition this, now they have a leg maker intake for a 2019, 2020, and a 2021 Trackhawks. This goes away. Put your leg maker in, put your B Woody in, put your JLT in, and you'll hear that glorious, glorious whine. Next, you wanna put your oil catch can. An oil catch can would be mounted right here on this bolt, right here, prevents all of the oil vapor from getting back into the supercharger. It gets collected in the air can and doesn't go through the engine again. So you need that. Then you need engine bling all over the place. You need bill of technology, engine bling. And where do we put it again? I put it over here. I put it here. I put it on top of the fuse box. Notice that there's no cover for the PCM, unlike the Durango Hellcat, because the <clears throat> opening on the hood is in a different position where it's not directly over the PCM like it is in the Durango. So because this is not only a smaller a heat extractor, because the heat extractor is so much smaller, they didn't have to put a rain shield here above the PCM. So that's not needed and that's not there. So that's okay. Now, what else do we have? We want, we have engine bling for here, for here, for here. Where else do we want to put it? We want to put some here, here, uh, oil cap here, and also the brake cap. So get yourself some billet technology engine bling. Get yourself some cold air intake from LMI Lug Maker, B Woody, or JLT. And again, we're going to go over this one last time before we say goodbye to the final, final, final Trackhawk and final, final, final Hellcat engine in a Jeep product for now. We just don't know if this will ever come back, but we do know for sure the WK2s are gone. And we don't think, and I believe, it's just not gonna happen in the WL. So one last time, boys and girls, women and children of all, and men of all ages. What is this again? This is 6.2 liter, supercharged, Hemi, 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 707 horsepower, 645 pound feet of glorious American muscle torque. Get you some of that unbelievable Hellcat powered in a Jeep, in a Jeep. I've been enjoying my Jeep Grand Cherokee track off for the past two years, almost three years now I've had it. Getting close to it's three, two and a half years. We've had it for two and a half years, getting close to three years. But this is your last chance to get a brand new one. Built in December of 21, December 22nd of 21. This is awesome, this is glorious. This is fantastic, you know? I could just spend the whole day here looking at this engine, but all you have to do, boys and girls, is I'm gonna span over the supercharger. This is a 2.4 liter supercharger. This is the standard supercharger of all Hellcats. Unlike the Demon and the, and the Red Eye and the Super Stock, and now the Jailbreaks all have the 2.7 liter supercharger. This has got the 2.4 liter supercharger, but nonetheless, it's still supercharged. It's got more than the 475 horsepower SRT. You can still get the SRT Durango for 2022. You cannot get a Trackhawk in 22. You can't get the Durango Hellcat in 22. You can still get your Challenger and Charger Hellcat in 22, but this is it, boys and girls. This is the last, the last, the last time you'll see a Hellcat engine in a Jeep, in a Jeep. This is a Jeep. This is not clickbait. This is not Photoshop. This is the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk with the Hellcat engine. One more time, 6.2 liter. Supercharged Hemi V8, 707 horsepower, not 710 like the Durango Hellcat, 707 like at the standard. And it hasn't changed since 2018. It wasn't bumped up in 2019 or 2020 like the Challenger and Charger. And it wasn't bumped up to the 710 
like it was in the Durango Hellcat. And it wasn't bumped down either, because if you remember the TRX, the TRX has the same engine, but it's 702 horsepower. A little change because it's a pickup truck. But in any case, let's go over this one last time, then we'll do the next thing that I never do on any other walk around because I don't have the opportunity, but I do here. And that's the double piece of resistance, and that's the cold start. One more time, 6.2 liter, supercharged. Hemi V8, 707 horsepower, 645 pound-feet of torque. Get you some of that. Get you some of that kitty cat right there. The kitty cat of the Hellcat. So one last time, we're going to say goodbye. We're going to take this piece of tape, put it on my jeans, make sure that they have it. So this is it, boys and girls. This is it. Trackhawk. We're going to close the hood. Say goodbye. Close the hood. Awesome. If you Like I said, if you want to keep seeing this, just rewind my video. You can see it all over again. So one more time. One, two, three. It's all closed up. And now, boys and girls, we have one last thing to do before we do our final walk around. And that is piece of resistance 2.0. 2.0. And that is I'm going to take the, the key. Let's hope it does start because we have the full tank of gas. And I believe it was just delivered here. So the battery should still be good. So... Hopefully Trey doesn't kill me. We're gonna start this thing. You ready for this, Trey? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. Cold start, Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, 2021, final one built in the showroom floor of Sandstone, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Avenel, New Jersey. One, two, three, let's go. Ooh, all right. It sounds nice. Not as loud as mine, dude. Because <laughs> you need that Borla attack system, but this is still cool. It still sounds good, and it's louder than the SRT. I guess you guys sold the SRT? Yeah. SRT's gone. Track hook's in its place. If you're interested in this, come see Trey. He'll hook you up. So, yes, we're not going to keep this on for much longer, but there it is, boys and girls. Sounds awesome. Sounds beautiful. Beautiful thing, Jeep Grand Cherokee track walk. Now we're gonna turn it off. One, two, three. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> that sounds awesome. All right, so we're gonna do one final walk around of this glorious Jeep Grand Cherokee WK2 2021, last one built ever. Track hawk. Track hawk. Oh, we didn't do this before. Yellow calipers, yellow calipers. This is something they should have done in or on the Durango Hellcat. They should have made the caliper yellow like on the Trackhawk. Notice that even though in 2021, all of the SRT products, the Durango, Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT, Durango SRT, Challenger Scat Packs, Durango, RT Tow and Go, they all have Brembo's that say SRT on them. Well, guess what? They decided not to put SRT on the track hog. They stuck with just the Brembo name. It doesn't say SRT. And also the center caps say Jeep. I know I changed my center caps. I put SRT center caps on my track hog, but this is cool in that this is what makes it unique. So let's just do this one more time. Our final walk around of the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk 2021. Ask for Eli, ask for Trey. I'll put their information on the bottom of the screen and in the description of the video. Met a lot of great people here at Sansone. We're gonna be coming back here in July. They're gonna have a nice car show. We're gonna document and film all that. It's gonna be a great time. They want both my Trackhawk and my Durango Hellcat here. I still haven't figured out yet how I'm gonna get both here. Unless my girlfriend wants to drive the Trackhawk. She always wants to drive the Trackhawk. So maybe we'll let her drive the Trackhawk. I'll drive the Durango Hellcat here and we'll have a good old time. So one last time, 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. Get you some of that. Come to Sansone. Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Avenel, New Jersey. Come see Trey. Trey's back there. He'll hook you up. He will hook you up and he will be more than happy to sell you this. Also, Shout out to Eli for allowing me to be here today and filming this great vehicle. I got the keys, they unlocked it. They allowed me to start it. It's awesome, it's all good. 
So one last time, say goodbye for now. Unless you come here, the last Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk to ever grace the face of the planet in the showroom floor, brand spanking new. So with all that being said, with all that being said, this video is now coming to a close. I'll meet you in the driveway with final thoughts. We have a lot to say about this vehicle more in the driveway, but I mean, hopefully you enjoyed this walk around of the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. This is Ralph Hellcat signing off. We'll see you in the driveway in one, two, three. Peace. If you look, so I got this all customized. So I got the leg maker cold air intake and it's cold air because it's carbon fiber. I can put my hand on it and not burn myself. It increases the wine. I got Bill of Technologies oil fetch can. I got all Bill of Technologies that, crump, that really, I like the satin finish. Yeah, it, I think it sets off the supercharger really nice. I got certain, certain, certain things in here like supercharged gear, 6.2 liter here. And then the 707, I got that specially in green. Yeah. It's a little bit dirty for me. I usually keep it a lot cleaner, but once it, the summer rolls around in spring, I'll be cleaning it. Nice. That, that, that leg maker put on it. It's LMI, it's the company, leg makers, the full air intake. They engraved that specific to. It, it keeps the uh, water from, because it's cold air, so it's got an open filter, and to protect it from the water, it, it, that protects it from getting wet. So what do you think? Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Amazing. I love this thing. And then when I show you the Durango Hellcat, the Durango Hellcat is almost finished. On, on, yep. That's also Bill of Technology on the seat. You only have 11,000 miles on this car? Yeah, only 11,000. Oh. I bought this in 2019 as a leftover on film. So let me rev it again for you guys. Sandstone, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Avenel, New Jersey. There's Eli right there. The guy that I was talking about before, Eli. I forget all your name. So. Oh, okay. There you go. Trey. Trey. How you doing? I'm Angie. All right, Angie. Hey, we got the whole crew here. This is awesome. A lot more than I expected as far as the welcoming committee. So, so this is part of the video, guys. So whenever I put a car on my YouTube channel and shout all these guys out, give me your business cards as well. Put it in the description. And yeah, so me we, and you have some business to talk about as well. We do. Yes, because we're going to be having a big event here in the summer. Yeah, so I was just being told that. All right, yes. I will definitely be a part of that. I don't know if I'll be able to bring both of them, but I'll probably I'll be. You make a choice. You're definitely going to want to bring both of them. All right, we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Let me just turn this off real quick. I can serve on gas. Oh, now we can hear each other. Yeah, right. So I had a Charger Hellcat. I did the exact same mods on that but I took them all off to trade it in. And my Durango Hellcat now has the same Borla Attack system. I was the first person in the United States to put the Borla Attack cap, full cat back exhaust on a Durango Hellcat. We're gonna close the video here. Again, thank you guys. Sansone, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, awesome crew. Definitely like, subscribe, follow, and we'll meet you in the driveway with final thoughts. Thanks again, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video of the walk around of the Rao Hellcat walk around of the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. Yes, the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. The final built Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk ever in the world. 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk built in December. It's so sad that we're seeing the last brand new one in the showroom floor. Now we're gonna talk about it in Final thoughts time, final thoughts time, final thoughts time. Yes, final thoughts time. Well, one of the last ones built, very exciting, very exciting that I had the opportunity to actually see a 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee Tracker. They're scarce. The 2021 model year was all about the Dodge Durango Hellcat. It was a one year only vehicle. Everyone got excited about it. The Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk has been around since 2018. 2019, 2020, and each and every year, the production has gone way down. In fact, 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee track off production was probably the most production of all the all wheel drive Hellcats in that they built 5,000 for the United States. In 2019, it went way down. A little more than only 500 were built in 2019 because I think there were a lot of leftovers of the 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee track which of course, I was one of those 
people that bought the 2018 and 2019. In fact, I had an opportunity to buy a 2019 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, but they wanted full sticker price, if not more. I got this for under sticker. So it was a no brainer, same vehicle. Why not go with buying my dream car, my dream truck, my dream SUV at the time for $15,000 less. It's a no brainer, yes. So 2019, a little over 500 bill. And then in 2020, production went up a little bit. It went up a little bit, about 800. And then after the 2020 model year, Dodge announces the Dodge Durango Hellcat. One year only, 2000 were gonna be built on that. And because of demand, they wound up ramping it up to 3000. I think because you had 3000 Dodge Durango Hellcats built, I don't know for how much demand there was for the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk in 2021. I wouldn't be surprised if there were less than 500 built in 2021. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows how many were built in 2021? We won't know until the numbers come out. The official numbers have yet to come out yet, but we're going to hopefully get those numbers in. Eventually, when those numbers come out, I will then post it in the video. And of course, this was built December 23rd. This Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk was built right before Christmas. And of course, you only had another week after that where production ended all together to put. Those are the numbers. Those are the statistics. It is sad, but true. It may not be the last Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk that I preview or do a walk around of, but it may very well be the last new one that I do. Remember this, we have a whole series of the final built Dodge Durango Hellcats. We have about at least 12 of them. I've only released three so far. In fact, I released one that was at Fullerton and I released a double that we did at Licardi. And now I still have many more videos to post up the last of the Dodge Durango Hellcats. We're gonna pepper those videos in throughout the rest of the year. As far as the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, this one at Sansone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Avenel, New Jersey. This one is one of the final ones built. Hope you enjoyed it. Can't think of anything else about this vehicle because we already talked all about it during the video and I hope you enjoyed it. So we're gonna keep the final thoughts short. And before we end the final thoughts, we got a shout out to all my friends at Sansone, Sansone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Avenel, New Jersey. I'm going to shout you out one by one, put your information on the bottom. So here we go. Eli Jimenez, Eli Jimenez, awesome, awesome, awesome guy. He's the general manager at Sansone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Awesome guy. Met him when we did the walk around of the Dodge Challenger Hellcats. In fact, those are still available for sale, by the way. I forgot to mention that. If you're looking to buy either Dodge Challenger Hellcat that was in my previous video. They're still available at the time I'm recording this video. Reach out, first and foremost, to Eli, Eli Jimenez. His information's on the bottom. But if you want to go directly to a salesperson, you can still talk to Eli, still ask for him. But if you want me to recommend some salespeople, here we go. Next, I want to recommend Trey Alexander. Trey Alexander, good friend of mine, good friend of mine now. He was very helpful in the making of this particular video. He moved some cones out of the way. He got the keys. I started it up right next to his desk. You got to meet Trey at the end of the video. And he was also in most of, oh, I should be most of? He was in a lot of the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk video that we recorded today. So shout out to Trey Alexander. Shout out to Trey Alexander. His information is on the bottom. Next, we have Angie. Angie Calderon, Angie Calderon. Yes, we are good friends too. If you're looking for Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram at Sansom. Definitely reach out to Angie. Angie was also briefly in the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk walk around video, and you got to see her at the end of the video when we were doing shenanigans and talking about my Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. So definitely shout out to Angie Calderon. Her information's on the bottom. Definitely reach out to her. Next, we have Arion, Arion Moreno, Arion Moreno. He was the one that said, say, hablo espanol. Yes, Arion, if you're Spanish speaking and you're looking for a Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram, reach out to Arion, Arion, Arion Moreno. His information's on the bottom as well. Say, hablo espanol, Arion, my good friend. And you got to see him 
at the end of the video when we were looking at my Dodge, my Dodge, my Jeep Grand Cherokee track phone. So, next, 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 we have, last but not least, Patrick. Patrick Sikowski. Yes, Patrick Sikowski. He's a good friend of mine. He's the one that kept on greeting me at the door and also recommended the big event, invited me to the big event that Sandstone is going to be having in the month of June, I believe. I will give you more details about that in my upcoming videos, but definitely shout out to Patrick Sadkowski. His information's at the bottom. So again, with all that being said, thank you again, Sandstone, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Avenue, New Jersey for allowing me to do this walk around. Thank you to Eli. Thank you to Trey. Thank you to Angie. Thank you to Arion. And thank you to Patrick. The 2021 Dodge Challenger Hellcats that were in the previous video are still available for sale. Take a look at that video, check out my video, check out the walk around, and if you like either one, it's Smoke Show, Pitch Black, with the Pitch Black one has the brass monkey package as well. If you're interested in either one of those vehicles, definitely reach out to Trey, reach out to Angie, reach out to Arion, or reach out to Patrick, and then again, tell them that Ralph Hellcat sent you. And also, give a shout out and say hi to my good friend, Eli Jimenez. So, shout you guys all out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So with all that being said, <laughs> with all that being said, <laughs> those are my final, final, final thoughts. So with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs up. I truly do appreciate it. Put a comment or two, put a comment or two, put a comment or two, put in a comment. If you put in a comment, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, I always respond to all my comments. Also, share the video with everyone you know. Share, 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 share the video with everyone you know. I truly would appreciate it. Last but not least, last but not least, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Join the family. We'd love to have you as part of the Ral Hellcat family. We have so much great Ral Hellcat content coming in the year 2022. Definitely hit that subscribe button, tap the bell notification, be part of the family, and you'll be notified on the next video when it comes out. So that being said, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. This video is coming to a close. It's rainy now. It was drizzling when I first started this video, when I did the intro and the final thoughts, it was just drizzling. Now it's raining. Now it's raining, so you know we're gonna keep the ending short. So, <laughs> now that it's raining really hard, we gotta get through this really quick. So, thank you again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hope it's not raining where you are because it's pouring on me right now. Be safe out there, be safe, be safe, be safe. Peace to all of you, and you know, we want peace, peace, peace throughout the world. We want peace in the United States. We want peace in Ukraine. We want peace everywhere. And we want peace even when it's raining and raining on top of you right now. It is pouring hard. I'm going to have to change these clothes in a moment. So definitely, definitely peace, 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 peace to all of you. And you know how we end these videos. We always end these videos with a peace out. And we always do it SRT merch style. So here we go. Here we go. It's pouring rain. Let's go. Peace, 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 peace. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully it's not raining where you are. It is pouring on me right now. Hope you're getting a lot of good laughs out of this because I am now soaking, soaking wet. Oh my God, I got to change this shirt. We'll catch you. We'll catch you on the next video. So don't know what the video is going to be like right now because I'm training. I can't concentrate. Peace to all of you. Thank you again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll do one last piece. Here we go. <laughs> so much raining. One, two, three, <laughs> This is dedication. This is dedication. It's pouring rain and I didn't stop recording. Thanks again for watching. I'm soaked. Hope to try where you are. Peace, peace, peace. Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks for watching. We're enjoying the rest of your day with this. Ah! It's raining! It's raining! Goodbye, everybody. See you the next video. Peace! Oh, my God. Woo! Oh, that's so wet. Ah! Uh -huh.
turn this off yet. 